Welcome to GTI Spindle Technology. My name is Tom Honig and we're here to deliver a very special uh, video today. Uh, we're here to talk about sort of a sneak peek uh, for our customer base, which I first want to thank the customer base of this program of Vibe Pro and the iPad Analyzer has been a huge success. We have over 300 units, both running the Vibe Pro uh, route software and also our iRotor balancing software for balancing out in the field. So once again, I want to thank all of our loyal customers. Uh, this has been a huge success and we're rolling uh, most of this success back into the system. And this video is going to discuss how we're rolling that back into the software. We're actually building Vibe Pro from the ground up. And we're going to show you some of the sneak peeks on some of those features that are going to be coming, which post-processing of uh, which we did not have before in Vibe Pro, we simply took a PDF or a screenshot of our spectrum. We are actually going to be taking the raw data uh, from the Vibe Pro system and we're going to be showing that in a special viewer mode, which you'll see behind me here, and you'll actually be able to move cursors, look for varying frequencies, do all kinds of post-processing uh, that is available on higher end analyzers is now going to be available on the iPad as well. But we've also done a lot of hardware changes, which I think everybody's going to be happy of. A lot of these uh, upgrades are coming from you, the customers. Um, our traditional case here has uh, been very successful, but people have asked for even more harsh environment uh, cases. Our two-channel DAQ box simply pops off the back. It's still convenient. We're still going to sell uh, this modified Otter case. Um, we're all using the lightning connector on both the iPad 4 and the iPad mini, and uh, both cases are identical. But what I have here to show you, and this has been submerging in a bucket of water for well over an hour now, and I'll simply pull it out of the water, you can see, and it's actually been running in the background live while it's been in the water, and you can see all, all things are functioning perfectly. So for the uh, person in a more harsh environment, maybe doing vibration analysis in harsh weather and rain, uh, not only is this more shock resistant and, and durable, but it is watertight to down to six feet of water. So uh, a little more sturdy of a hardware case. One other thing which we do have a video out already on, but I want to demonstrate it here as well, is we have the node, uh, which now adds temperature uh, to our reading. So while we're out collecting our vibration analysis with our accelerometer, uh, we can simply point and shoot and is Bluetooth connected to the iPad and you can register those temperatures and trend those temperatures, which I'm going to show you in the software. Um, you're going to be able to trend those along with trending your vibration readings over time on your particular assets. So uh, this node company, we're also working and uh, another real sneak peek, it is a dual sensor uh, unit. So as we've got temperature and is integrated into our app today, uh, we are working on building an accelerometer for the other end. So you're going to be able to do route checks without a cord uh, coming soon. So we'll keep you posted on that. Um, so from now, from here on further, I'd like to get deep into the software and show you some of the screenshots. So we'll break away for that. Okay, now we jump to our screen sharing uh, part of the tutorial here where I can show you on the iPad screen uh, what we're actually working on with the new ViPro software. But before I get into that, I want to show you real quickly here, uh, we have a Vi Plus, which we are also working on, which that app will be for more heavy diagnostics. Uh, waterfalls, uh, phase analysis, impact analysis, it'll have uh, more resolution, um, uh, many, many other diagnostics features, um, and I can just open it quickly real quick so you can see as we're building in here, we've got impact test, phase analysis, uh, just a few different things that we're doing so that when you get deep into diagnostics along your route, you're going to have all those features that the big analyzers have as well. But let's jump right into Vipro. And Vipro, as you can see, uh, still has its single measurement. Uh, area here which is the exact same layout with a few added features uh, that it exists in Vibe Pro in the App Store now that uh, many of our customers have enjoyed. Uh, the new portion of course is the viewer trends and reports here and the route measurements and the editing of those routes 
uh, here, which I'll get into. But quickly, we're going to single measurements so you can see the natural layout of our control panel. Uh, looks like a lot of analyzers. We'll turn it on. And normally, you know, you've got your Hertz, CPM, your, uh, you can actually do an audio out with earphones to listen to your accelerometer, all your RPM, bearing frequency adjustments uh, are all part of our, our original layout. But uh, quickly, I want to show here a new button, the report manager. Uh, what that's going to allow you to do is actually pull up a previous report that you may have taken of uh, different spectrums and uh, or a different asset measurement that you may have done. And I'm going to show you now how that is done. So jumping into the spectrum, I'm going to turn on a 1G shaker here, uh, which we're in inches per second now, uh, but we'll convert over to acceleration in a moment. You'll see how that uh, measures the 1G shaker. Um, but normally we were able to only save one spectrum per report. And that would unfortunately make us have to do one report for velocity and one report for acceleration. Well, now we've enabled the app to, with this little camera button up here, enables you to click it once. We'll save your first uh, image of the spectrum. And then you can simply click over to acceleration and you can see if I uh, jump our cursor up here and look down here, we're exactly at 1G um, and our overall is 1.1 Gs for the whole spectrum. And now we can save that spectrum to the very same report and it gives a number two up here. And uh, we'll say okay that that's saved. And what we did is we as actually added an additional spectrum that if you needed to take an axial or a different reading for some other reason, you can actually save three. So when we click it a very third time, it's gonna give us a warning saying that you can save no more images other than what we've currently saved. So we'll hit okay there. Now, when we simply go to this report button up here, our report pops up. We still have our traditional uh, severity chart for pumps, fan, motors, spindles, all that uh, is up at the top. You still get your overall, your top frequencies, your notes, if you wanna type in any special notes for the particular asset. And here we have our camera function, which I'm just gonna pull, which actually lets you pull out of the library as well. And I'll just pull a picture of a spindle out of my photo library real quick here. And we'll pull a motor out and we'll put that in our report. But of course you can use the camera and take picture of the asset that you, uh, we're working on or measuring at that point. So that way you can actually tell right here where your accelerometer was so for the next time you put uh, do the measurement of that particular asset. So now we can look at this report from the view hide button and it lays out real quickly in front of us. We have our uh, severity chart, our photo, our three spectrums lined up and acceleration velocity and then we've got a full page on each spectrum rolling down. Now I can simply save that report right here which will go to that report manager or I can simply email the report and it puts the PDF in the email format for me and I can just simply type in start typing in an address and then send that very quickly and that now has been sent. Um, but quickly saving a report I just have to enter in a, um, a test name or report name, hit OK, and now that has been saved into the uh, report manager. So let's go quickly take a look at that. One other attribute I want to show before you save it also, you can draw on any particular one of these uh, spectrums, you know, to point out maybe running speed, for instance, or one times running speed. So it's very easy to draw on these spectrums, save and close them, and then actually have that as part of your report. I don't want to miss that. But going back, let's take a look at our report manager button. We will tap on that. And there's the test three PDF we just saved. And there it is again. We have it and all the three large uh, units are up there. And then we can email that from here as well. So that is the standard part of Vipro and the little additions that we put towards the main functionality of Vipro. Let's go back into our route measurement. This is all new from the ground up.
And you can see I already have a hierarchy here, uh, GTI, uh, a bunch of spindles that, and air conditioners that I measured here at the plant. And I can pick any one of these, highlight them, and they will tell me what points of measurement here that I've uh, conducted depending on whether it's H1, whatever I want to name them, I can simply take those points here and add a point, say uh, V1, and just hit the plus button and, and add that to the hierarchy. It's very easy to add things to the hierarchy. But if I want to even edit one of these um, uh, points so that I have the proper frequency range, I've got the proper alarm set and everything else for, for my route, I can simply tap on edit settings, pick that point, and up comes the picture of that asset, so I can see where I put the accelerometer, whether I was measuring in velocity or acceleration, whether I was low, medium, or high on the frequency range, whether I used an RPM marker and what that is, and I can turn the, toggle that on or off at will. I can also put bearing models in, any bearing models right through the 200 series, 300 series. Uh, we've got a, a multitude, or you can type in your own bearing uh, and your bearing defect frequent or uh, inner inner pathway sway defects and all that can be typed in manually if that bearing isn't in our hierarchy or in our, our log. Uh, also your danger thresholds here both alert and danger are here so that will be part of your trending or here you can simply pull up the ISO chart and go by what, uh, group three, four, or one and you can see how that changes the different uh, uh, specifications depending on what you click on. So you either do it custom or you can go by ISO. And then down here you can see we have a temper th temperature threshold which will also be part of the trending in the viewer. So as you can see through the, this whole uh, unit we are able to uh, customize each point that we're measuring along the route and hit save and back and that is memorized so that anytime we want to go to a grinder, take a measurement, we can simply click on that asset point and it'll pull it up if we want to view or edit it or if we're in the collect vibration and I click on it it is ready with a spectrum I'll turn the shaker back on and I'm able to hit this save and back and actually that will save that data to that point the quickest possible way to save data on a route is what we've designed here it's very well done so now let's go to the viewer and now we can actually view at any time any of the parts along the route that we talked about earlier that we set up. So let's go back to the speed tester. Uh, we'll look at the H1 at velocity. And you can see I've taken a series of measurements on certain dates. And you can see they're all color coded. If they went over my alert threshold, they're in yellow. If they've gone over my alarm threshold, they're going to be in red. So I can either quickly hit the overall trend and tap that and look at its overall trend and you can see very clearly here that I've all oh, these are all my measurement points I've taken along the way oops didn't mean to pop out of that because if you do tap on that particular measurement from the trend device you can actually look at that spectrum at that particular time and it flashes you back to the spectrum of when I took it during that trend and now I'm able to clear the cursors that are up there, maybe move some other cursors around. I can pinch the spectrum in and out at will, look at different frequencies, check for bearing frequencies, all just like I was taking the reading live, but I'm actually post-altering uh, or post-processing this information. So let's go back and we're back to our trend. And you can see here on the dial, it's very nice too. It lets me know that I have one reading in the green right here at the bottom. I have uh, five, one, one, two, three, four, five that were above this yellow alert level and they're all under the red. If any one of these have gone over the red, I would have that pie chart would also show me how many machines or recordings were over my alarm threshold. So let's quickly toggle back and click from the overall trend back to the spectrum. And any one of these points I can pull up just as if I were there at the time of reading. So here I can go back and say, well, what was my running speed? Let's look. We can put our cursor on it. 
and we see that it was running at 10,277.23 CPM. And I can actually look at the amplitudes at that level, do all kinds of manipulation, and even save that graph again with my camera and put another report together if I'd like. So there's all kinds of different things we can do. So now going back, let's get into the database. We can actually send that whole database of our whole plant readings up to Dropbox so that we can put it into an Excel spreadsheet and see the whole plant's data. Or we can simply export and import back and forth to Dropbox to save that because this viewer that I'm showing you now will also have a web viewer that you'll be able to view and post analyze any of these uh, data points actually from our viewer on the Mac. And I'll show you some of those screenshots as well uh, a little further on in the tutorial. So that goes over some of the main uh, add-ons, which uh, the big one is probably the quickest route measurements being able to be taken in the field of any analyzer on the market. And secondly, our post analysis process, which just makes it extremely simple for the viewer to see any time that they've done any readings, whether they're in yellow, red, uh, depending on their amplitude, and you set all of those uh, alarm levels. So, um, you know, it, it's completely intuitive. Uh, so we will move to the viewer uh, that will be part of the web viewer. Okay, now we are looking at our web viewer. So we simply can click on the file and import the Vibro database right from Dropbox. And you can see I have imported the exact same hierarchy we were looking at on the iPad. I've got all the different spindles and air conditioners that I tested. And we'll just quickly click on this Persky. And you can see I've got uh, two H1 measurements, one in acceleration, one in velocity, and two H2. We'll click on the first H1 and immediately our uh, trending of all four measurements that I've done on that spindle pop up right here on the bottom. And they're all in yellow because they are uh, above the threshold that I set. It gives me all the dates and timestamps of when I did that. It also gives me a picture of the Persky spindle that I was measuring. And then I can quickly click on any one of those measurements I took and immediately pops up my spectrum here. And I can look at that spectrum in depth. I can go to the uh, spectrum window here, display amplitude. So for instance, if I wanted to know what that amplitude is of that peak, I can just click on it. It gives me the amplitude and the frequency. And I can even go to the spectrum and turn on RPM markers, which now put a marker right on that running speed. So I know I'm on the right running speed. And as you can see, I can also do all bearing markers for inner and outer races, et cetera, et cetera on that. And as I click on the peaks, it will tell me right here whether it's non-detection or whether it is detected a defect frequency with the click of the mouse each time I click on it. So it's just another feature uh, of our viewer that will be available for everybody. All right, in closing, I would like uh, to thank everybody for their attention to this small tutorial of our sneak peek on our new software that'll be coming in just a few months.